This is a treadle hammer. It's not a power hammer, but it is a very powerful machine. Now, unfortunately, myself, like a lot of other beginner blacksmiths, don't have the tools or resources necessary to make one of these really cool machines. But I came up with something that's a little less powerful, but a lot cheaper and a lot easier to make. I'm going to call it the blacksmith's seesaw. Now at this point in time, this project is merely a proof of concept to see if the idea works. So when you see me jerry-rig a hammer onto a piece of 2x4 with a couple nails and a hose clamp, just realize that that's just to see if this idea works. If you decide to make this yourself, you should probably beef it up a little, add some more hose clamps, and make everything more secure. What I'm doing now is measuring where I need the pivot point or the fulcrum to be on the seesaw so that the hammer head will contact the anvil when it's fairly flat. Basically, we don't want it hitting the anvil at an angle. Now, we're going to talk about wiggling. We want to minimize with the wiggling as much as possible. That way, our hammer strikes the anvil at the same spot every single time. In order to minimize some wiggling, I cemented this 4x4 into the ground about a week earlier at about a foot and a half deep and loaded it up with concrete. Now I'm also going to cut a small groove. It's really not that small, but it's just big enough for the arm to slide in and out of. That way the arm won't be going right to left at all. It'll ideally just be going up and down. And of course, I'm not great with a saw, so I had to go back and clean everything up with a wood rasp. Next, we need to work on the fulcrum, or the pivot point. And to do that, I'm drilling through the first side of the 4x4, slightly into the 2x4, so we have a hole to go off of. And then I drill the first hole about full size, and then go over to the other side, kind of eyeball where it needs to be, and drill that out. Then I'm going to use this cool new rotary rasp to widen out the hole and you could also use a circular file for this but I wanted to try this out. Now here's that little hole I was talking about earlier that we drilled into from the 4x4 and we're going to go ahead and widen that out. Now to strengthen the holes that we made in our 4x4, I'm cutting out little pieces of metal tube. That way our metal axle, which will be rebar, only scrapes against other metal, not the wood. Now I ended up using some epoxy to keep these little tubes in there, that way they wouldn't fall out or rotate. And then I'm gonna do a little assembly of everything. Now I realized that Rebar will not be the best sort of axle because it has ridges and ridges will create friction. And when we have a lot of friction in our seesaw, basically it won't be as powerful on the way down because the friction will be slowing it down. But once again, this is a proof of concept, not a permanent solution. Now when forging, it would be extremely difficult for one hand to be on the opposite side of the lever and the other hand to be working the piece of metal. So we're gonna figure out how we can foot power this machine. So in my mind, the easiest way to do this was to attach a rope to the far end of the lever, have it run down through a pulley, and end in a foot loop.
Now, one of the first big mistakes that I made was just having the foot loop a little bit too close to the ground. That meant that the lever couldn't go up very high, but it was a simple fix. I just flattened out the little piece of metal that supported the rope and tied the knot a little bit higher. Now, a smart person is going to realize that forging on only one foot is not a very smart idea. So what I kind of found out is that putting my right hand on top of the 4x4 pretty much served as another point of contact with the ground or another leg, and I didn't have any problems with that. So in conclusion, does this work? Yes. Is it powerful? No, not exactly, but we do have 8 pounds of steel coming down on metal at a very rapid rate and the big thing is it takes us little to no effort whereas swinging an eight pound hammer would be pretty difficult so you guys feel free to try this out on your own you can make it more efficient make it bigger more powerful you can make it better looking more sturdy anything like that feel free to try that out and i'll see you guys in my next video